Howdy folks. So today I'm going to go through the uh, practicum number three. Do the video of the cleaning and the burette prep and the using the burette. So without further ado. So first step is cleaning the burette. If you're actually cleaning glassware we should do this in a stepwise fashion. The first step being using a soap solution and scrubbing it. If you have any like stains that are not coming out, the proper thing is to use a little bit of the soap solution. Now, each desk should have some solution, soap solution. You're gonna put in a little bit of beaker and pour this into here. I do not need a lot. I do not need a lot. I just need enough that I can get some good suds. So, into here, let's see. Here I'm going to pour in, pour this through the top. Let's spill, it's fine. I'm going to gonna wash this. So right here, so I poured some into here, you can see it down there. I'm going to then use this long scrub brush and fit that into here and basically plunge this several times. Suds. So that's going to create a nice tight that clean. I'm going to go ahead and let that drain out the tip. Let that drain out the tip. So we have some suds in here. As you can see right there. It's all soapy. The next step is to rinse this out with tap water. We don't need we don't need to worry about how much we use because it's tap water. So basically, at this point, I'm going to just I'm going to fill this up with tap water and let it drain out. Fill it all the way up. It's fine. Let it drain out. You can let some of it drain out through the top. You let some of it drain out through the bottom. But the idea is that we're trying to wash away all the suds. Wash away all the suds. The idea here, when we wash anything, we're washing in stages. Each stage should be removing the last thing we added. Right now, Soap is to remove any particles, any any sort of particle that might be there to some dirt. The tap water is there to remove the soap. The next step, which is going to be to add the deionized water into here, is going to be removing the tap water. Now we're not going to need much. We're not going to need much. I'm going to squirt some and I'm going to be twisting this. As I, as I twist this, as I squirt it, it's basically coating the sides with deionized water. Coating the sides with deionized water. And it's essentially removing what the tap water. All said and done, if you look in here, I have less about five mils. I have about five mils. I probably used more than I needed. So I'm going to drain that out. So I've now removed all the tap water. So all the ions in the tap water by using deionized water. Now, regardless of whether you're using soap to properly clean your glassware each time, you should always rinse with deionized water 
and then your sample. So always rinse typically with deionized water in your sample. The idea with the deionized water is to remove whatever's left, whatever residue was in there, and your sample is always to remove the deionized water. So now that I have my sample, I'm going to use a funnel, and I'm going to, with its closed, I'm going to add a small amount of my sample. In this case, I'm using green water as my sample. I don't want much. A few mils is more than enough. So as you can see here, a few mils. Now, my goal here is to now swirl this again. I'm gonna clamp this back in place. So holding this, I'm going to Turn this at an angle so that the liquid's moving and letting this roll up the sides. I'm trying to get this to roll up the sides so to coat the sides that was previously coated with deionized water with my sample of green dye. So I'm removing all of that sample, I'm removing all that deionized water and coating the sides with my sample. Now. My sample is the rest of this is going into the waste. Now that I've rinsed it with my sample, it's going into the waste. So I have now cleaned this. We are now ready to you to start using the burette. Once again, we are going to use a funnel because we don't want to spill. We are going to fill this some degree of the way up. We only need 15 mils, so it probably only needs to be filled halfway up, maybe a little bit less. But before we go any further, one of the key things here, so you see right down here in this tip, there are some air bubbles in this tip. How do we get rid of those air bubbles? I, since this is now clean, I can now put my sample right below it and I'm going to turn and open this and let the sample flow back out until there is no air bubbles. You should see no air bubbles falling out as I do that. As long as you see no air bubbles, since it's a solid column of water, we are now ready to begin. So we are now ready to, to get to begin. So we're going to read our first volume. Our goal here is that we are going to measure out 15 mils as accurately as we can. So we want to make sure this is clamped in place with a burette clamp. You want this to be vertical as possible and we're going to dispense 15 mils. But the first step is we don't record this, we only record this as a change in volume. So we're gonna hold this up and we're gonna look at the bottom of the meniscus and we're gonna read it from the top down, the top down. So it's not, the volume is not 28 mils and some change, it is 27 and some change. So looking at this very carefully, we're looking at the bottom of the meniscus. So reading there, there, that's 28. So 27.9, 27.8, 27.6, about 27.5. A little higher than 27.5. So it's somewhere between 27.5 and 27.4. So, so 27.4 something. The key here, when we're measuring a volume, is to always record to what we call an estimation place. So wherever the last marking is, the next decimal place over is the estimation place. So we have markings at the tenths of a decimal place. So our estimation is in the hundredths place. 
since it is just barely over 27.5, I'm going to say the actual number is 27.48 mils. This, by do, making that estimation, we are able to get four sig figs instead of simply three sig figs by making that estimation. Even if it was exactly on 27.5, I would still estimate it as the hundreds place as being zero. That allows us to have four sig figs, even if it's very accurately known. So the next step is we are going to then so we do that by adjusting that to our eye level so we're not looking at it. We want to make sure we're not looking at it from below up or above down. We always want to make sure we're at eye level when we're analyzing this. So with that, 27 and some change, we need to add about 15 mils. About 15 mils. I'm not gauging you on getting exactly 15, but within one mil of 15 mils. So real quick, doing some quick math, where should I stop? If we're adding about 15, we should get 230, well, let's say it would be about approximately 42. That's where we want to get to. We want to get to approximately 42. Get to 42, that would be a proper volume. So we're going to go, technically it's going to be 42 in some number. But we'll, so I'm slowly twisting that. Oop, there, that's, that's good enough. So the next step is measuring out the, figure out how much did I actually add. So once again, this is, that's 42. That's 42.5, so that's 42.4, I'd say, and that's 42.3. The meniscus is right at, I'd say 42.36. So I'd say, so I went to 42.36. So my goal, 42.36. So now, the last thing I need you to do before you dispose of this is to do a quick calculation. Quick calculation as to how much I use. So to find out the volume delivered, we're going to do 42.36 minus my 27.48. And you can use a calculator to... Do this you do not have to do it by hand but so the difference is so eight two so eight one so fourteen point eight eight I delivered fourteen point eight eight mils at this point, we can just dispose of the rest of this in the waste or recollect it because we can keep reusing it for other students because it's just green dye. But once we're done that, then we quick rinse out the burette with a little bit of deionized water and we'll be done. But so that is this practical shouldn't be too hard still takes a hot minute but so the key thing is learning how we're supposed to measure volumes with the burette i really want you to understand how we measure volumes with the burette and how we dispense things okay there you go thank you